What's up everyone, Mike here. So hanging out on the mushroom farm tonight and I got a cool video for you guys. So what I did is, I'm, first of all, I've got some lion's mane growing in here I wanna show you guys. I did this really low tech growing method with unsupplemented bulk substrate, okay? So this is straight sawdust, actually all those bags in there or straight sawdust, right? So not supplemented at all. Normally, because I am a commercial grower, I always supplement my blocks with soybean hole typically when I'm making sawdust, so like master's mix. So for those of you who haven't seen my hericium grows, like my lion's mane or coral tooth grows, here's a quick picture. So check this out, this is what I normally do. As you can see, normally I like to grow a lot of lion's mane and a lot of coral tooth mushrooms. I really like to grow hericiums. And I wanted to kind of do something though, low tech, because for one, one thing, I did a whole lot of tutorial videos. I've linked some of those tutorials down in the description box below, as well as videos on how to grow the perfect lion's mane mushroom and the perfect coral tooth, tooth mushroom, in case you guys would like to see large commercial style grows using supplemented blocks instead of unsupplemented blocks. But check out those tutorials. Now back to the video. And I didn't want any of that stuff to go to waste. So some of like the agar cultures and the grain spun, I was like, hey, what can I do with this? Um, and because I didn't want to wait for the upcoming growing season, you know? So I was like, you know what? I'll just go ahead and I'll put it to use real quick and we'll do some low tech methods for the channel. And um, that way I can teach everyone something. And what this basically is, because it's unsupplemented sawdust, how I got this basically pasteurized enough or, or sterile enough, you know, to make the mycelium grow on here, because none of these blocks can contaminate. I just want to let you guys know, none of them contaminated, all right? They did perfect. And here's what I did. I took, and I'm gonna make a full video showing you step by step how it worked out and how I actually did this process, but I'm just gonna talk to you guys about it today. And then we're gonna go in and we're gonna look at these mushrooms in just a little bit. And they're not completely finished off, but they're growing um, and they're, they've reached escape velocity. So we're gonna get nice full fruits out of these things. And I just wanna show you them a little bit, but here was the method. So I took five cups of sawdust pellets or wood pellets, okay, and I put five cups of them in a bag, and then I boiled water on a stove, and then I just took five cups of that boiled water, and I put it right into those pellets, all right? I let those pellets then kind of puff up, and then I folded the bag over, basically, and just kind of stuck it on my table right in front of the flow hood. So I let them cool off in front of my flow hood. If you don't have a flow hood, you could also use a still air box and just put them in the still air box. But anyway, I let them get to room temperature then. And then I just took one quart jar of grain spawn and I inoculated them with a one quart jar of grain spawn. And anyway, I've got some lion's mane growing in there right now. Two strains of my lion's mane actually. I've got my Yeti strain and I've got my Mississippi main strain. They both have cool, different characteristics to them. And I'm not gonna go over them completely right now in this video. I'll wait till they're actually fully mature fruits. And then I'll show you them so you can see the differences between the two strains. And But they have different growing characteristics too. So they're beneficial for different growing methods and maybe different type, uh, times of the year for you. And all, all, all different things like that. So we'll talk about that later. But I just wanna say this method is great for anyone across the world because most people have access to sawdust or wood pellets and then most people, you know, you got access to water. So you can boil yourself some water, put the, like I said, five cups of pellets in one of these small bags and just hydrate it with that boiling water. Let it cool, okay? And then um, inoculate it with just, I used one quart of grain spawn. And we're gonna do, like I said, fully supplemented growing. I'm gonna show you guys how you can grow monsters because you're not gonna grow as big of fruits when you're using an unsupplemented method okay the supplemented method is truly the best way to get like the banging mushrooms you know so but I will say some of the benefits of doing unsupplemented is you don't need all the equipment okay so you don't need all the fancy sterilization equipment all you need to do is get some boiling water and I mean really that you have a, a low chance of contamination then too because since there's no, the more nutrition you put in one of these blocks more the more likely it is to contaminate so this is like like i said i had no contamination at all and um i feel like anyone can accomplish this but this one right here this is a hericium coralloides so um when we go on the grower we're going to cut this one open because i haven't actually put a coral tooth in there yet all i have in there right now like i said i have two strains of lion's mane and i actually have some king oysters growing some pleurotus uringi and 
I'm guessing like these things might be ready. Maybe New Year's Day or something. I'll be picking them. I'm I'm shooting this video. I'm gonna po I'm posting this video the same day I'm shooting. I think it's December 28th today. So we're gonna wait. We're gonna wait a couple days. And I actually also have some uh, Aspen oyster in here, uh, Pleurotus populinus, that just started coming out of emerging from the bag. And they have. And I did these, like I said too, unsupplemented, and it's showing the exact same growth characteristics that the screen typically shows when grown on supplemented sawdust they're just a little bit smaller okay and um but anyway guys and uh but anyway let's go in here and let's check this out all right everyone so here's a little baby lion's mane forming up so this is the yeti string and i shot this video just a few minutes ago earlier this morning it actually had kind of like a little pink tinge to it we'll look at it from the other side you can still see it a little bit but that's just a sign of healthy growth in the initial stages with this strain and now i'm going to show you the initial formation stages of my Mississippi Maine. So here's my Mississippi Maine. Now this one pretty much always grows pure white, grows super fast, and looks like clouds when it's done. It's a really pretty lion's mane. And uh, now this next thing I'm gonna show you, this is a Pleurotus eryngi. So these are king oysters. These actually taste like scallops, and I can't wait till these are done. These are one of my favorite mushrooms to eat. The texture on them is just great, and like I said, the flavor is like scallops, and it's just amazing. So now we're about to cut open that bag of Hericium coralloides that I've got here. And as you can see, that mycelium looks totally different than the other bags, but this is normal for Hericium coralloides. That's actually how it's supposed to look. So I'm cutting that bag open. I'm just using a steak knife because that's all I got on me. Normally, I usually like to use a razor knife, but good enough for right now. I'm really excited to see how this Hericium coralloides performs on unsupplemented sawdust. All right, cool guys. So those are just some unsupplemented sawdust bags that I kind of put together and I wanted to show off to you guys. And like I said, I'm gonna do a step-by-step -step video actually on how you make that sawdust bag, but it is so simple. So I'm just gonna go over it one more time. Like I said, I took five cups of sawdust pellets, put them into the bag, and then I took five cups of boiling water and then I just added that right to the bag. I let them cool into room temperature and uh, then I inoculated it with one quart of grain spawn. And uh, like I said, none of the bags contaminated. So that's the pro, okay? Like your odds of contamination are super low. I'd say the con is you're not gonna get the yield, obviously, that you could potentially get with a supplemented bag because that's really the way to get the banging yield on those things. Um, but I'm gonna do a couple other easy to do mushrooms like this just so everyone can see. Like I actually feel like the king in there that I did um, is a little bit tougher to do um, compared to oyster mushrooms or lion's mane. Lion's mane is pretty aggressive, so I kind of figured lion's mane would work like this, no problem. And uh, the coral tooth, I've never done a coral tooth like this, so total experiment right here. And the mycelium on a coral tooth bag looks totally different than mycelium on oyster mushrooms or even lion's mane or heris even Hericium americanum. So um, that the way that that coral tooth mycelium is looking it looks right to, it looks perfect to me honestly as far as it should how it should be performing on an unsupplemented substrate so i imagine we're going to get some nice little coral tooth fruits um even just growing on unsupplemented sawdust so i think that's super cool so um tune in for that because i'll make some videos on that but like i said anyone across the globe can potentially implement this method if you don't want to use supplemented sawdust and we'll do a video in just a few days um, on harvesting that lion's mane and uh, I might even cook it up or something like that for you guys But if you have any questions at all on this method just drop it down in the comment section below Like I said, this is super low-tech and I'm going to do a step-by-step -step video so you guys can actually see it But I literally just put boiling water um, With the wood pellets into a myco bag let it cool down and then inoculated it simple as that but um, I hope you guys found this helpful and informative, and if you did, please drop this video a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, but that's all I got for you guys on this one, and I will catch you on the next one.